Hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Hey. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about all of the spooky books that I want to read in October. At first I was thinking, oh, this seems so ambitious when I actually put a list together of all the books that like I read or am currently reading and then want to read. But then I realized it's only like nine books. So it's really not that ambitious because I did read like about nine books last month. Um, obviously I read a little bit more before that, but I wanted to go spooky. You know what I mean? Obviously, usually, um, I mean, I, I can't remember if during October, I, any other year before this, I make an effort to read something that is scary, spooky, blah, 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 blah. Obviously I pick things up as I'm feeling it. And this month I just said, Besides the one book I am reading that is not scary, which is Queen of the Unwanted by Jenna Glass, I'm going to try really hard to keep it spooky-ish. So here, there you have it. So the first book that I was interested in and that I already have finished is Blood on the Tracks by Shuzu Oshimi. This was really freaky. Um, I'll, read, I'll read one of the paragraphs on the back. Um, Shuzo Ishimi delivers his most unsettling work yet, the tale of a seemingly normal family suddenly swallowed up by a creeping horror of everyday life. I would definitely agree. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to say what this is about because I haven't heard many people talk about this. I can't even remember what this, when this came out, but I, when I was trying to look for scary books to read. I also wanted to read some scary manga and this was I believe at the top of the list. Uh, I can definitely say that it is unsettling. Um, yeah it's definitely unsettling. The way that some of the faces are drawn is very very creepy and you know that something's going to happen. You can feel that something's going to happen. You feel that something is wrong and someone's not quite right but then the big reveal kind of happens. And it happened at the very end, which made me go, damn, like this is a lot shorter than I thought it was gonna be. So I really wanna pick up volume two because I, I want to see what happens now that the person we've felt this creepy feeling about has done something bad. What happens, especially now that they've been seen to do something bad. So, I really enjoyed this. I, I didn't rate it. Um, I guess I, I really enjoyed it. But sometimes when it comes to some manga, I don't really know how to rate it. So I didn't rate this on Goodreads, but I, I would say it was four stars. It, it definitely was good. It made me want to read the second volume. So I would say that was pretty good. So this I would definitely recommend. Now on to books that I'm currently reading. Last month? I can't remember. I think it was last month when I was really interested in uh, Summer Ween. I randomly picked up a book by Darcy Coates. It was called The Carol Haunt and I absolutely loved it. I went back to Barnes and Noble and I don't know, I saw Parasite and the cover really caught my eye and also the premise. So far, this is really good. I'm what? I'm on part four, chapter 18. And this is about a parasite, an alien parasite that is able to infiltrate anything, not just humans, but as of right now, it's, it's definitely humans, uh, and mimic them, uh, completely absorb into them and they wear your skin. And they are slowly taking over the galaxy and you are meeting people in the beginning who are encountering this alien and the people that it's infected and them trying to get away. And eventually everyone's gonna come together, I guess, to try to defeat uh, this thing. I really like Darcy Coates writing. I can't even explain what I like about it, but I will say this, space scares the shit out of me. I just am very scared of outer space. It's freaky and I don't like parasites. This is not the same kind of parasite that was in uh, Nick Cutter's book, you know, wormy-esque white wriggling things. That makes me want to vomit. But 
this really has already started to scare the shit out of me. I was falling asleep when I first picked it up. I read the first two chapters. She kicks it off immediately. Action starts right out of the gate and which I love. I honestly, I think that's the thing that I know this is only the second book, but that's the thing I've loved so far about Darcy Coates. She brings the heat immediately. So I'm definitely looking forward to finishing this. I have another book by by her on my Kindle that I got for for like free basically. And I definitely want to continue reading her books. I just am really, really impressed and happy with what I've read so far. So I'm going to keep the momentum going. So I'm excited about this. The next book that I'm reading is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. I got this from the library. I realized I hadn't gone to the library in a long time. And I've seen some people talk about this book now and it's kind of like hit or miss. I'm not even really sure how to explain it, but I've started and I'm on page 23. So I just started this morning, but it's giving me the Netflix series Aris, like Secret Society, Secret School. I guess they were they in a school in that show, but basically uh, there's this thing called the Catherine House. Students stay there for three years and by the end of it, they're supposed to be these prestigious big people in the world. like justices, judges, what have you, basically the elite. But one of the main characters that we're following, Inez, she discovers something sinister. And I don't know, I, I, I'm liking it so far. It's definitely very descriptive. Like where you're giving me a lot of like the, the hedges. This is what the room looks like. The house is old. And I didn't even realize until literally just now where it's blurbed by Rory Power. And I am kind of getting that. I am getting that so far. Like there's a lot of explaining about what things look like, so on and so forth. But I'm I'm definitely interested in it because there's been a few people that have said that they really enjoyed it. So I'm excited to read this. It already is giving me like, someone's gonna be sacrificed, I believe. Why not? It's it's a secret society. Come on. Now we're moving on to books that I want to read. A lot of these are going to be graphic novels. I follow Image Comics on Instagram and they did a list of like scary releases, not necessarily new, but releases for Halloween, blah, blah, blah. And these three I was really interested in. So the first one is Moonshine Volume 1. This graphic novel is about a guy named Lou. He's from New York City. He is trying to get moonshine from West Virginia. And that's really all I know. Uh, <laughs> trying to look up the description on this one. And I think it's basically going to be like showdown of the moonshiners. Not really. Something obviously more sinister. I think it's going to have more to do with like crime bosses because it's New York. Obviously moonshine runners, da 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 da. But I don't know. The cover looked really interesting. I don't know. It was on the list. I'm not sure what else to say about it. So yeah. Next one that I'm going to read is Coffin Bound Volume 1 Happy Ashes. I'm just going to go ahead and read what this one's about since... I don't know what the fuck I was talking about when it came to Moonshiners or Moonshine, not the show Moonshiners, Moonshine. All right. Uh, Izzy Tyburn has promised the world that if it won't have her in it, it'll have nothing of her at all. Chased by an unstoppable killer, she's retreating her life, leading, leaving nothing behind but burned rubber, ash, and sun-scorched bones of those who get in her way. Ride shotgun on an existential road trip through the tangle of a blood-splattered life. Mad Max Fury Road meets Neil Gaiman Sandman in this full throttle grindhouse fantasy epic. That sounds pretty good, right? I'd say so myself. Uh, the cover itself looked really interesting. I, I don't, I can't even really explain to you why I chose the ones I chose uh, from the list by Image Comics. Uh, I know one of the reasons is because a lot of these were free on the Hoopla app. So <laughs> I'm reading all of this from my iPad, which I will read the graphic novels from. But that looks good as well. And the last one is Farmhand Volume 1, Reap What Was Sown. Technically, I have started reading this already. Um, and, and it actually seems pretty good, so I'll read this one too. Jedediah Jenkins is a simple farmer, but his cash crop isn't corn or soy. He's gr he grows fast, healing, highly customizable human organs. For years, Jed's organic transplants 
have brought healing to many, but deep in the soil of the Jenkins family farm, something sinister has taken root. Today, this dark seed will begin to sprout and the Jenkins family will be the first to taste its bitter fruit. So far, this one is really interesting. I thought it was just going to be a simple like zombie graphic novel, but it is more than that. Uh, so I'm enjoying it. I'm, I think I've read up to page 50 on the Hoopla app of the graphic novel. And it's really good and I love the art style too. But it is about a family uh, when the siblings, the brother and sister are really young, they think their father has gone away on business and it's late at night, they forgot to feed the animals. So they're out there and something attacks uh, the chickens. When they go to kind of clean everything up, the son digs into the ground and he sees that his father's buried there, but he's not dead. He is like the living dead. And something, his dad is like, you have to get away. Um, you can't be here. You shouldn't have seen this. This is all for the best. And then something sprouts out of the ground. And from there, we kind of like literally transition years later when the kids are adults now. And you finally see what came out of the ground or what was going on with his father. Uh, but it's not that simple. It's already starting to get really interesting. Like it's a little bit more than just, hey, we grow human organs, which is already freaky enough. Uh, but I'm absolutely enjoying it so far. The next book I want to read, and I've been wanting to read this for a while, was The Doll's House by M.J. Alridge. Ar Arledge. My apologies. This is book three in the detective Helen Grace thriller. Sorry, uh, I've read the first two, Eeny Meeny and Pop Goes the Weasel, and I really, really enjoyed those. I've had this for like two months and I feel really bad that I haven't kept up with it because I really like this series and I like the character Helen Grace. So I'm really, really, really hoping to get to this this month. Uh, technically, I feel like this fits in with Spooky. I mean, it's a murderer, a murderer, kill a lady on a beach. Found her dead body there, so we gotta discover what's going on. And every single time, or not every single time, I've only read two books, but I feel like it is really scary because the killers in the books are, they, they go off. Let's just leave it at that. But I definitely wanna read this this month. The next book I want to get into this month is actually gonna be something I listened to on an audiobook, and that's Below by Ryan Lockwood. This is another book that I looked up a random list online of like scary books and this one is like monster, eh, well yeah it's a monster in the ocean. Another thing that also scares me, uh, I don't know if it scares anybody else, but just the fact that, where does it end? What lives down there? You know we haven't seen everything that's at the bottom of the damn ocean. And that is scary. Also, you know, being crushed and drowning. Don't like that. Don't like that at all. But anyway, <clears throat> this is about a diver who's just, who s discovers like scary shit all the time, like sharks. Uh, but there's something worse coming and it's migrating up the coast of California and it's about to kill everybody. So I think that'll be a really interesting one to listen to. I mean, it's on the Hoople app, so it's free. I have eight barrels this month, so get into it, right? And I'm interested. I'll definitely let you guys know. I'm having a good time listening to audiobooks right now. I also went back and listened to Alien Echo by Mira Grant. Uh, if I were going to give some recommendations, by the way, if you guys wanted to listen, read, whatever, um, some scary books, and honestly, for my favorite author, Mira Grant, Alien Echo is a book I actually have already read. I own the physical copy, but I saw it for free on audiobook on the Hoopla app and I love it all over again. It's another space alien book and it's really short. I would definitely recommend it. And I think that she did a really good job with the monster alien itself. It's definitely brutal. It can be kind of disgusting, but not in a like body horror kind of way. It's more like, oh, that alien really fucked them up type situation. And then I would absolutely, absolutely 100% recommend you read Feed by Mira Grant. I love that entire series. Uh, 
another one that's on audiobook. So even though I've read it already, uh, I want to listen to it again just because I haven't reread the series in a long time and I've been thinking how much I want to reread it. I'm not going to count it as a Goodreads. Same thing with Alien Echo. I've already read it so just because I'm listening to it. It just kind of was really nice at the end of September to listen or read some things that I'd already you know, give myself a little palate cleanser. Like I didn't count the fact that I reread The Girl in 6E. I don't know why, but I just had this weird like desire to listen to, to read that again. And it was nice to revisit that to that world. So yeah. Uh, so lastly, a book that I originally said I wanted to read this month. I don't know if I will. But we'll see. And that book is Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. I am pretty sure I've never read a Stephen King novel. I think my grandma bought me a Stephen King novel when I was younger. I can't really remember, but I've just never picked anything up by Stephen King. You know, I obviously hear the problematic stuff about him, so mm, that hasn't made me interested in reading it, it really. Uh, I thought I wanted to read it, but when I saw it was over a thousand pages, I said, no, absolutely not. I'm gonna have to pass on that one. But everybody, everybody has said that Pet Cemetery is really good, <sighs> but I, I mean, it's a little over 300 pages. I guess that's not bad, but if I have time, I'm gonna try to read this book. I bought it this year. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, I don't wanna, I mean, I feel like I'm making it sound like it's just the worst possible thing I could read in my entire life. I really don't wanna feel that way. I know I sound like I hate it here, but that's not the case. I just know that I've got a lot on my plate and I don't know if maybe this is gonna be too much, too much, but we shall see. But anyway, that's it. That's the end of the spell that I want to read this month. I am pretty damn sure that I am going to read all of these, I think. Yeah, I, I, I am, I am, I'm going to do it. I mean, the graphic novels are easy. I'll breeze right through those. The audiobook will be fine. I'm not halfway through with Parasite, but it's really hard for me to put this book down. So I think I'll finish it with by the end of the week. It's Saturday right now, so I I don't see why I wouldn't have it finished by next Saturday. And Catherine House might, honestly, Catherine House might be the only one that I kind of am sluggish with, but we'll see. And who knows, I might end up just going ahead and buying volume two of Blood on the Tracks, just if I'm feeling like I just really wanna get out of reading like a regular novel. But there you have it. That's the end of the video. So thank you so much for watching. If there's anything that you are reading or you're excited about, let me know. That'd be awesome. <laughs> and uh, enjoy the spooky season. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.